Little by little, I keep finding out ways of accomplishing my Windows desktop workflows on my Chromebook. And the most recent workflow I got working is video editing. Thanks to Chrome OS's Linux support, you are able to use video editors that are available for Linux. So I decided to test out some editors to see if they can provide what I need. My journey to finding a video editor for my Chromebook involved testing five different editors. I would then create a full video on each of them so I can get a good idea on how well they work for me. In order for an editor to qualify, they had to support the ability to export video projects to DaVinci Resolve. I found five editors that checked off that requirement. The editors that qualified were DaVinci Resolve itself, Pitivi, Caden Live, OpenShot, and Shotcut. Shotcut currently doesn't support the export feature, but it's on their roadmap, so I still tested it. The reason I wanted to export to DaVinci Resolve is because I want to use my Chromebook the exact same way that I use my iPad, and that is by first creating a rough cut of a video on the iPad or Chromebook, then when I'm done with that rough cut, I export the project so I can load it up in Resolve to fine tune it and add more advanced features. So let's get on to the testing. For all the editors, I made sure I used the latest stable versions for each. Of the five editors, three wouldn't work at all. The Vinci result would not open after installing. I doubt my Chromebook would be able to run it well anyway, but I still had to test it. I then tried Pativi, and it also didn't work. I was not able to add any clips to its timeline. Finally, OpenShot did not work because anytime I would add a clip to the timeline, the program would crash. I do plan to periodically test future versions of the editors that did not work, just in case things get better with them. So it came down to Shotcut and Caden Live. I was able to create full videos on both editors, so I got a good idea of their workflows and how they compared to Resolve. And my decision ultimately came down to Caden Live. So why Caden Live? Well, it had better overall performance, especially while navigating the timeline. With Shotcut, every time I selected a clip, there was a slight pause before I could continue editing. This became very annoying and frustrated me. Zooming in and out of the timeline was also faster on Caden Live, which made editing more pleasing. Projects also took a long time to completely load in Shotcut, whereas in Caden Live, they loaded much quicker. And every once in a while, Shotcut would crash on me. This never happened in Caden Live. On top of the performance issues, there were certain things I couldn't do in Shotcut that I thought were must have features. One of them was the ability to change shortcut keys. With Caden Live, I was able to change its shortcut keys to mimic many of the same shortcuts I use in Resolve. This makes switching between editors much easier. Also, Shotcut did not support archiving projects. I had to manually archive my projects, and this involved making sure all my media was in the same location. If I forget to save a clip in that location, it will be missing from the zip archive I will create. Finally, Caden Life supports exporting to Resolve right now, whereas that feature has not yet been implemented in Shotcut. Now, the process to exporting in Caden Live isn't as simple as just choosing export it on its menus. The exporting is done via Open Timeline IO, and that has to be installed separately before you can begin exporting. I also experienced several issues with exporting. I had trouble exporting projects that were a specific frame rate. Turns out I had to modify the source code to Open Timeline IO and manually add this frame rate. After compiling, the export worked. There were also other exporting problems as my project got more complicated, but performing a project clean in Caden Live fixed the issue. Finally, the exported XML file wouldn't open up in Resolve. I had to modify it by adding extra XML tags and attributes. I figured this out by comparing the LumaFusion exports from my iPad to what Open Timeline IO was exporting. I noticed the differences and just added the appropriate changes. Now, this is not really a user-friendly way of exporting my projects, but I am willing to go through this just to edit videos on my Chromebook. I decided to try out video editing on my Chromebook because I recently upgraded it. I tried some of the editors on my previous Chromebook, which had an Intel Celeron processor and 4 gigabytes of RAM, and it was way too slow in order to make video editing useful. I then upgraded to an HP Chromebook 15 with an 8th generation i3 and 8 gigabytes of RAM and performance is now a lot better. Now, that doesn't mean that performance is perfect, 
it still can be better. But for my main use of creating rough cuts to later finish in DaVinci Resolve, it works perfectly. And I'm really happy with the results I'm getting. Now I'm not only limited to creating rough cuts for exporting to Resolve, I can create full videos with Caden Live. I can probably just choose to use Caden Live exclusively on my desktop and Chromebook and avoid the exporting issues altogether. But I really like DaVinci Resolve and am not willing to give it up. I hope Linux on Chrome OS and Chromebooks in general eventually get powerful enough to support DaVinci Resolve. In the meantime, I'll be using Caden Live on my Chromebook. Do you use any video editors on a Chromebook? If so, let me know which one and your experience in the comments section. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like. And if you want to see more content like this, subscribe to my channel. Thank you, and I'll speak to you next time.